We're here today at the British Museum here in London on a hopefully non-rainy day. We'll have to see how it goes. I'm Ryan MacDonald, one of the UK's Mars One candidates, and... I'm Diane McGrath, one of the Australian Mars One candidates. So, okay. Ryan. Yeah. Um, I'm, it's very different. I mean, in Australia, there's seven of us, as you know, and not yeah. too dissimilar in numbers to what you have in the UK. But of course, Australia's kind of a bit bigger than you. <laughs> we don't get to meet up even ourselves very often, so it's awesome to be able to meet you. I mean, yeah. do you guys in the UK get to meet up? Well, yeah. I mean, in, in the last month here in the UK, we've had two meetups. So it's obviously nice being able to hop on a train and within a few hours be there with all your candidates. <laughs> so, I mean, what, what's the distribution of candidates like over in Australia? In Australia, uh, well, the candidate, there's seven of us in total, so we have five of them in Queensland, which is uh, one of our northern states, and the other two of us, myself and Josh, are in Melbourne, which is right down the bottom. And to get to Brisbane, where the others are mostly based, and even further north to Cairns, where um, Gunnar is based, uh, that's Cairns, goodness, that's, that's a, almost a day's worth of travelling, a number of different flights, so it's, it's not wow. easy. We don't catch up. For, in fact, we haven't met up as a group yet. We're hoping to do so early next year. A uh, few of us yeah. have met up face-to-face, -face, though. So, what has been what's been your experience of meeting with some of the candidates? Because I've, I've obviously I've maybe met in person maybe around ten to fifteen oh, candidates oh, awesome. in people, but that's obviously very convenient being in Europe so close to the nexus of it all. <laughs> so, how many people have you met in person? I have met two, three, three now. I feel so privileged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, because we're so far away from each other in Australia. Um, yeah. I've, I mean, I've met Josh. I met him a few times, uh, Josh Richards. And I uh, met Natalie Lawler, who's in Brisbane. Um, and I've had some emails and or messages from some of the others, but, hmm. but that's it. But everyone's so far away from us. So wow. we always we see the rest of you guys catching up. We're like, oh, <laughs> oh, so hard. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when you've met as a candidate mm -hmm. in person, how do you think it differs from just communicating with them online? And do, do you think there's any kind of single trait that candidates seem to share in your experience? That's really interesting. Actually, I think there is. That, just the, when I have met the other candidates, or even just the difference from meeting them to being on email, it's around a solidarity. Like you finally meet someone who's going through all the same stuff as you. Even though your personal journeys are different, you're all on this same mission. Your vision is the same. Yeah. Uh, and it's almost like you, you're coming together for a, like a reunion almost. It's a family hug. And it's, it's odd because you know we know these people so well because I mean we we've been in the Mars One program in, in some cases since yeah. April 2013. Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah, I mean it's it's a big part of your life. Yeah. And then you finally meet people who you've spoken to a lot before, but just in person, it's just it's just a bizarre experience. But then you just immediately gel with them. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I mean, I, I always find that. We're, we're, we're obviously from completely different backgrounds, yes. we have completely different life experience, completely different cultures, yeah. and yet there's just one thing that we just seem to, that unifies us, that links us together. This, this whole idea of the bigger picture or doing the mission for humanity. I know often in the media people say, well, are you going to Mars because you don't like your life here on Earth? And <laughs> it's not like that. I, I find it's, I mean, I love my life here on Earth and what I want to do by going to Mars, it's all about bringing ideas back to Earth, getting yep. people on Earth excited about science. Yep. And it's all about what you can give back to people back on Earth. Oh, definitely. I'm sure most of us get the same question about oh, why on Earth would you want to go and um, don't you like your life here? And, um, and I love my life here. I, I love swimming in the ocean. I love running outside. I love the research I do. I love trying to make a difference to sustainability. But I can do those things from another planet as well. Just make it in such a way that it has an even greater benefit here on Earth, I think. Yeah, most definitely. So, Dan, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, golly, um, well, I've been quite fortunate. I've, I've lived in a number of different places around Australia and uh, as a child I, I spent um, nearly seven years growing up in the outback and in, um, in the desert. So for me... That so very much like Mars then. <laughs> red dust and a lot of isolation as a kid actually. Um, but I've moved around as an adult so I've spent years living in many different states and um, I've worked in for government in the energy policy area, um, worked in pharmaceutical industry for a long time um, and to, and now I, I work in sustainability, particularly in sustainable food systems, and um, that's kind of my area. Very important for human life on Mars, of course. Very then. important. Yeah, we need to eat. If you don't eat, <laughs> very simple. If you don't eat, don't. Yeah, there's no life. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I'm curious. So, what do you think about the aspects of like isolation that we will have to experience yeah. when we go into the first simulation outpost as part of eventually round three and then round four of the selection process? Have you experienced isolation before? 
Oh, I guess, I mean, growing up, I was very isolated mm. as a child, uh, and that's, I mean, I, I did all my schooling in those years by correspondence, so the, the school would send me the work, and I'd teach myself from books and mail things back, and um, I had brothers, so well, I still have brothers. Um, and <laughs> Always we, nice to know. <laughs> they're still around, thank God, um, but, you know, they were my only friends in those days, and, uh, and the rest of the time, I was kind of by myself, just living in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, I guess I have experienced some sort of form of isolation for, for a long period of time. Uh, as a child, uh, and whether that's going to be helpful in that environment. Yeah, because I think, who knows? I mean, I, I, I personally don't know because the world is globalised at the moment. We're so connected. Yeah. We just don't experience the level of isolation that people used to in centuries past. Yeah. And so I always think it's fascinating to explore the analogy of what going to Mars might be like relative to those first people who say went to Australia, for instance. Yes. So wh what do you think about the, the kind of analogy there and how it might compare? I think it's what uh, most school children in particular can understand and adults as well, that, mm. that idea of that pioneering spirit of, of not being afraid to say what is out there. I mean, there's so yeah. many people that came to Australia, but then once they're there, I mean, Australia is such a vast country. Mm. Uh, a lot of the early explorers were trying to see, is there an inland sea or can we go and live here or what sort of resources mm. are over here? Can we survive? Um, and I, I kind of think that in some ways the Mars One mission is a bit like that too. It's, it's yeah. the extension of humanity going, well, can we do this? Can we live out there? What possible? can't we do? That doesn't. Are there any boundaries? Because yeah. we haven't come up with any solid boundaries. We've just. I mean, we started in Africa and we just continually went out. We're always out to explore. And the thing that really excites me is that it's not just about the physical exploration of what might be on Mars. It's about the exploration of ideas. Yeah. And I think if anything will be the greatest export from Mars, it's not going to be resource or anything. It'll be the export of ideas from Mars. Ideas and and also how we can live as a society as well. I think. Oh, some of the absolutely. <laughs> Um, it's about the practicalities about how we can better communicate cross-culturally. I mean, the, the four that will go will, uh, will be from different corners of the globe here. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and that gender diversity and, uh, and the breadth of, of age and experience of this tiny community uh, that will say, oh, if we can do this like this, you know, as a community and, and live so well integrated like this, why on earth can't we do it on <laughs> it's, this planet? It's like, it's like humanity in a bottle almost. Yes. And the fact that it's going to be a documentary series and that anyone from around the world can watch it, it's going to show the best... It's just the distilled essence of the best yeah. that humanity has to offer. And so I'm really excited about the possibilities to inspire the public to try a different way of living, potentially. Yes. Maybe we will find a better way to build society on Mars, and that's an incredibly exciting prospect. I, I don't know if you had the chance. I, I've had the chance to speak to some um, like junior primary school, so preps and so forth, and we do little activities, colouring and things and drawing things, and what would you take on an exciting trip to space? Uh, and it's like trying to keep kittens in a box. <laughs> Their energy is just in amazing. It's great but it's the one yeah. infinite resource we have on the earth just the excitement of children it is we should be powering everything with it just put them in put them, <laughs> and these roaches going and off we go no worries we'll never need solar power it's for children <laughs> Oh no, I love the ideas that children generate. So I, I, I went I went to a school and I actually judged a competition for designing spacecraft. Oh yes. And it was absolutely fascinating seeing the ideas they were coming up with to power spacecraft. In fact the most common idea actually was hamster power. Brilliant. It's just wonderful. Hamsters <laughs> run around and rocket flies away. But it just shows oh. that they bring aspects of their own life into whatever they're you know thinking about a projecting mean, yeah. the questions they ask too always tell you so much about themselves you know, yeah. can you take a dog with you to space that's the one thing i love because with children you get questions yeah. that you've never encountered before i mean I, we've both been involved in mars one for over two years yeah. now but it's children that are creative enough to come up with brand new questions and that that's what really makes me smile having to think on my feet <laughs> <laughs> and I give, i've started giving a prize for any child that can come up with a question i've never heard before it's a great I idea i'm gonna try that <laughs> it's just, just uh, like a Mars One sticker or something yeah. like that. Um, I don't tell them at the start of a prize for any question. But yeah, whenever Charles child asks me a new question, there's a prize for you. <laughs> so then even more hands come up. <laughs> I've got a question. But no, it's great. I love it. I mean, the energy, you could almost spend the whole time just doing question and answer at any school you go to or any class group. Um, it's... They, they just gets, they're so inspired and excited by it and they want to explore it. And, I, and for me, it's, it's not just about us going out and inspiring children. I think we gain a lot from that as well. Definitely. It's seeing the excitement, it reminds you of why you're doing this and that we're making a difference. And it, I would argue that it's the most rewarding aspect of being a Mars One candidate, engaging with children and young people in schools. I think, uh, I mean, think about it from the Australian perspective uh, as opposed to, say, the US, and I don't know what it's like here in Europe, but mm. we don't have an astronaut program or really any sort of space program in Australia so the thought of having 
you know, someone in their school. Someone who you could know, someone you, who maybe they know your parents or maybe someone who was at a grocery store, someone who is local going into space. Yes. And even if you don't, incredible. it doesn't really matter to that child because they've seen that something is possible. And that's the thing that excites me as well is that to be there and help a child see that, yeah, that dream you've got, it's not crazy. It is it is possible. You have to just work out how to do it and don't lose sight of it. Ah, that, that's, that's the fundamental message that I always want to convey is just identify what is the one thing in life that you're incredibly passionate about and you want to pursue and so long as you're determined enough and never give up on it there are no barriers you can achieve anything yeah. and i think that's the real message that we want to convey by our involvement in the mars one project yeah. maybe they don't want to go into space in fact many people do not want to go to mars but it's the image that we can do it that yeah. i think is so important i love sharing with the, the students as well the fact that not all of us in the mars one program that the, the hundred that left not all of us have you know, science degrees or, or, or physics or um, whatever, that, that we come from such a diversity of experience yeah. and, and it doesn't matter as long as you are passionate about something and have the desire to learn it, yeah. you can learn it. Yeah, that's what, I mean, it's the whole, like, I, I encounter often the, this idea that some people are just smart, they'll succeed, and then it's, but it's not like that. The thing I've experienced time and time again throughout my life is that it's the people who work hard and are determined that succeed in life, and that, that's just what there is, and that, that's what I want to convey. Yeah, exactly. Just, there, there are no limits on you. You're, you're not born either going to succeed or fail. It's up to you how far you go. Yeah, and, and that's I, the, one of the points that I really hope kids take out of meeting with, with any of us is that um, the only people that should set boundaries on, on dreams are, are themselves, and even then, yeah. why? The only boundaries are self-imposed. That's, <laughs> That's very right. much the point. Absolutely right. Yeah, so, so. Um, but just just to wrap up then, yeah. so based on what's happening with Mars One at the moment, mm -hmm. what would you say? What do you think is the most exciting development that's happening at the moment? Because there's, so, there's so much going on with Mars One at the moment. <laughs> I was incredibly excited about the publication of the, the Paragon Report. Uh, yes. Whether you're a scientist or not, that doesn't matter. Um, to see a validation that human beings can survive on the planet Mars using the sort of technology that already exists today, yep. it was incredibly exciting <laughs> for me. It's, it just reminded me that this is achievable yep. um, and that we don't have to look beyond what we already know to be able to do this in, in yep. many instances. Uh, I guess look, it, it comes down to one thing. If, do the thing that makes you want to get up in the morning. It's, it's really that. Do something that that makes you want to be happy being yourself and uh, that, that drives you to get up every day. Yeah, and it's, it's very much the same for me. Just don't let other people say you can do this or you can't do this. Find out what you're passionate about. Pursue it relentlessly. And if you do that and you stay determined and stay focused, you will achieve your dreams in the end. Okay, bye everyone, this has been a Mars One Meetup here in London outside the British Museum and we'll see you next time. Bye! See ya. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Do you have any thoughts on the topics Diane and I discussed and would you like to see more conversations like this in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. This week's featured video is the official trailer for the film adaptation of Andy Weir's novel The Martian which will be released in October. Next up though will be a Mars One mission update bringing you the latest news on the project from the past month. I'm going to be away next week, so it's currently targeted to be released on August 4th, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.